Hello friends, welcome back to Western Blog. In this series of uh, Zerito training sessions, we will be looking at uh, how to create uh, Zerito's uh, virtual protection groups. Okay, so <coughs> okay, so we look at it. So uh, virtual protection group is nothing but VPG. So this is our lab. We have two sites, production and DR. Uh, we already discussed on it. We have two ESXi box and uh, one vCenter and one ZVM that is Zerito Virtual Machine. And uh, we have uh, uh, two ESXi box running a couple of VMs. And uh, each uh, ESXi box has a VRA. In our previous video, we have installed it. And also we have a DR site where same thing here with uh, <coughs> with uh, one uh, ZVM with version 9.0 and having two ESXi boxes with uh, a local uh, local uh, data store and uh, a shared data store so we discussed about this in uh, in our previous video like uh, journals and replicas will be saved on DR site so let's go to our lab and this is uh, replicating over the van so looking at the lab uh, so uh, we are in our production site uh, uh, zero to a browser zero to <coughs> uh, co my, my console console and uh, here uh, two vrs already deployed here and uh, they are uh, they looks good looking at the the status and uh, if you go to zero to site uh, there also we have uh, two esxi boxes with zero to all uh, vrs already installed on it and uh, now uh, our next step is uh, to create a virtual protection group okay uh, to kick uh, to kick off replication and protection uh, protect your vms uh, we need to create a vpg in the production site so uh, so we are going to create the vpg in the production site now so a vpg in a, <coughs> a vpg is an organizational unit of vms uh, typically multiple uh, vm applications and uh, like you can create a VPG with uh, a bunch of uh, like uh, a complete uh, application uh, with for example a application a couple of application servers uh, backend servers frontend servers all in uh, in one VPG like we can create couple of VPGs uh, uh, and we can uh, create a replication to the DR site uh, so that uh, entire package of uh, VMs will be replicated and uh, when an issue is there or in this when prim primary site have any issue we can turn them on right away so uh, vms that must uh, maintain consistency and the right order fidelity together uh, creating a vpg allows uh, to decide boot ordering uh, define recovery sla and uh, pre-configure failover and test parameters including host storage and network so uh, we will go and create now so here uh, if you go to the vpgs uh, if you click on this you will be able to see a plus sign that is uh, create a new vpg so when you click this uh, 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 you'll be able to see vpg type is a remote dr and continuous backup uh, so we'll be selecting the remote and we need to create uh, the vpg name i will say, say it as srm okay and uh, pa uh, priority you can set it as high medium low and you can put some description so uh, what is priority is like uh, the priority settings of nvpg helps control the priority of the replication if uh, bandwidth becomes temporarily consistent <coughs> constrained however even low priority vpgs never have their replication uh, passed simply due to bandwidth congestion so in this case uh, like it's like uh, if your bandwidth is low um, based on the priority the replication will happen it is pretty simple to understand and uh, next click click next and uh, you need to select the vms you want to replicate uh, you want to replicate only these two and uh, just click on uh, this uh, right arrow mark to select the vms for replication and you can also define the boot order if you click this you'll get the boot order where you can delay boot delay select this one and uh, just uh, 
you can say change the order or you can add a group so so if by by that way you can uh, do it so you can create a new order a new group so that's fine we'll go with the default and click ok so now uh, whatever the VMs are available they will be listed here and we need to select them so and uh, click next and uh, we need to select the DR site now so when you click this one obviously we have only two sites so we'll select the DR uh, DR site and um, we need to select the host so we'll select the cluster instead of single host so based on the availability it will be replicated and uh, data store is uh, NAS uh, that is uh, a shared uh, data store and uh, uh, general history I uh, will set it one day and uh, target RPO, RPO uh, will be five minutes that's fine we'll leave all defaults and uh, we'll enable uh, uh, like a van traffic compression and uh, just click next and uh, next will be storage so uh, storage uh, on the storage tab uh, uh, will specify the storage requirements or recovery if you see here uh, these are the uh, default storage protection volume location and uh, uh, recovery volume location so we'll uh, leave default and uh, we will proceed for next so if you click edit select you will get a uh, few more options uh, where you can uh, uh, like uh, change the volume source and data store but that's fine so we'll click next next is network so here we need to select the network which we want to uh, so first uh, failover network uh, select we'll select the vm network and uh, recovery mm, uh, failover test network we'll select a test failover test network and uh, recovery folder uh, and uh, this is done so recovery folder we'll just select the, the root uh, mm, so once this is done if you have any pre recovery scripts or post recovery scripts uh, you can give the path here we don't have anything we'll just click on uh, next uh, so click next so if you see here uh, we have options to uh, like uh, give the test IP failover IP so so <coughs> on but uh, we will leave for default here and uh, uh, we can proceed but in production we can give the failover IP if you click here it will give the option to assign the IPs uh, so you want to give the static or DHCP you need to select and you will give the IP subnet and default uh, so when it is done obviously uh, the, well, the rip, when the failover uh, when our uh, DR site uh, uh, VMs come up it will take care of assigning the IPs and uh, it will bring the uh, servers online and uh, this is for test IP if you want to assign an IP when it is in testing like if you click this one will give the IP details where you can provide the test like uh, we will do a testing before like uh, uh, like uh, <coughs> like for a DR uh, we will do some tests at that time we can give the test IPs so for now we are good to proceed for next so long term retention uh, this uh, like uh, uh, talking about this uh, long, uh, you can configure if PPG will be backed up on a schedule for long term retention uh, so we don't do but uh, yeah you can configure this also so when you click next you will be able to see the summary so <coughs> this is what uh, we have configured anything you want to correct you can just say go back and change it 
once everything you feel uh, correct just click on done now VPG is getting created now so if you see here it is getting created uh, you can see the VPG name VPG type and the direction to which peer site that is DR site what is the priority and uh, protection status it is initialized and uh, if you go to the DR uh, uh, when you see here if uh, now we, there is nothing VMs created but uh, when we create testing when you run the testing what happens is we will be able to see uh, the VMs created so <coughs> now uh, it is getting initialized so it will take uh, definitely some time so once it is created it will initialize the sync and uh, you can see the auto RPA status uh, and uh, Uh, it will take some time so let me pause the video okay now we will do testing uh, so let's uh, so, so what is the process to test it so I don't want to do another video I will just complete it here itself uh, you are able to see the protection side below protection side there is a failover restore and move options so so failover when you click uh, failover you are able to see two options that is a live and test so to failover test you when you need to click this one and you need to select the to select the vpg so uh, you are able to see the protection status that uh, meeting sla so if uh, replication is uh, not happened or uh, it's uh, uh, like it's in progress it will be uh, sync initialization or sync in sync and uh, if it is meeting SLA then you are good so we'll click next and uh, yeah boot order all we didn't select so that's fine so and start failover test now so now it is running if you click this one you will be able to see the process uh, how much percentage it is and uh, if you go to the DR site you will be able to see uh, the status uh, task status like uh, replicating virtual uh, like uh, virtual machines are getting reconfigured and they are getting powered on so we have uh, we have just uh, selected two machines uh, so they are already <coughs> they are uh, getting they are created and uh, they are online now so uh, you are able to see the uh, like it's they are in progress but uh, they are already powered on so now they are uh, now they have, we are able to see that uh, our uh, test VMs are created like our testing as a part of testing VMs are created now here and if you go here uh, it, it says uh, waiting for user output so so when you are able to see that uh, like uh, If you click this one it will stop failover testing so now we c what we can do is like uh, you can click this one so just go and uh, once you click uh, stop failover testing so uh, if it is success uh, like you feel like it's success or failure if uh, some VMs didn't po power on or didn't came up if you feel that uh, this the test is uh, not success then you can select failure and if it is successful you can select uh, uh, success and uh, you can stop click on stop and once you click that again the VMs will be destroyed on the on the v <coughs> DR side you are able to see that they are powered off and uh, they will be deleted so you are able to see that they are deleted now 
so we'll go back to our our, our Zelto portal and you are able to see that um, again it it's everything normal so so uh, sometimes uh, yeah, auditors will ask for uh, test reports uh, for your DR uh, so when you're logging to the we have a portal uh, like if you are in a if you purchase a license and uh, configured uh, in your production uh, like you have a, a zero to analytics where uh, you will be uh, you will be able to this is the one I'm talking about so when you click it uh, it will take you to the uh, external site where uh, you'll be able to log in with your uh, uh, with the credentials and when you log in you'll be able to see the reports there and you can pull the reports and you can submit the reports so the testing is completed everything looks fine so if you see anything so we can add a checkpoint uh, like for example uh, checkpoint is like a snapshot if you add a checkpoint so it will uh, like we need to create a checkpoint name for example uh, Sunday 10 p.m. example only so we just click it so using the checkpoint we can uh, create the uh, testing pre-test checkpoints and uh, like you can do it from it from the checkpoints also so that's all for this video and uh, if you s anything I miss I'm just looking at it so yeah that's all uh, in production if you if you want to uh, like uh, live migrate uh, click on live and it will it will just migrate the VMs from uh, from the pro uh, from the production to the DR so uh, this is uh, something different from uh, 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 what do you call VM converter uh, uh, where we can migrate the VM so V2V all that is different but this uh, he Zerito is very powerful uh, for uh, production and DR configurations so that's all so thanks for watching and uh, thanks to Newton uh, sorry thanks to Zerito so our previous uh, training was uh, Titanic, so yeah uh, I'm happy to for that so mm, thank you all uh, thanks for watching and uh, please do subscribe and like my videos any suggestions and queries reach out to my mail ID uh, thank you bye bye